You guys, what a glorious day! <laughs> I'm at the house of my friend Tanya Teshki and we are about to make some amazing pate. And she is just the person to do it because she is the author of Bordeaux Kitchen. The Bordeaux Kitchen. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Hilda, for being here. It's really going to be fun. It's going to be great. So you guys, do you know why we're making pate? Because liver is one of the most nutrient-dense superfoods on the planet. Isn't that right? Absolutely. It's got all the minerals and vitamins uh, that are really bioavailable for us. Um, and the French, as I learned, eat, do eat a lot of organ meats, which are the highest nutrient density. And one of the easiest foods, organ meats, to make is um, chicken liver. So today we're going to try a pate with using chicken liver. And of all the livers, this is the most mild tasting, I think, is chicken liver, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's a good one to start with. I've talked to people who are like, I'm sorry, I've tried liver, I can't handle it. I think this is a good kind of gateway into it, right? Gateway, yeah, very good. Yeah, it's very easy and probably the most common liver. Uh, so, and these livers are from Joel Salatin's farm, Polyface Farms. Could it get any better? It's, I don't think so. And so are the eggs too. So, you know, we're using the most nutrient dense foods. We'll be using you know, pork, some bacon, um, some nice you know, herbs, but keeping it very simple. So it's not, not gonna be too tough. Okay, good. So what's step one? Okay, well, the first step really is to preheat your oven. And we're going to show you how to do this. Uh, the French use uh, to make pâté, to, uh, it's called a bain-marie, uh -huh. which is basically a tray with water. And you put your, your pâté uh, receptacle, like this, into that water, and it heats your fragile foods, or the meats are fragile, uh, low and slow and keeps them from burning. So it's kind of like a double boiler. Uh -huh, that uh -huh. So that's what we're going to do today. And actually the French often call a pâté uh, terrine from terre, which means earth, right? So oh. they they use, they'll often use, uh, or used to, at least traditionally, clay pots, uh, terracotta. So that's what we'll use today. And uh, and so let's go preheat the oven. Let's do it. Allons-y. She's got me talking French now. <laughs> let's go for it. So you said bain marie, which I love to hear you say. But like you said, it's really just a tray with water, right? That's right. So that it will gently cook these fragile organ meats. Okay. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to turn on our oven. I use the convection and I'm going to turn it on to 340. Uh, degrees Fahrenheit. You okay. can do 330 to 340. It's somehow a magic number with French um, pâtés. Uh, and you might need to take out your top heel, so it's still cold so I can touch it. <laughs> Maybe I'll get that to sure. you. Sure. So we're going to put this in here, and what you can do is you can boil water and pour the hot water in here, or you can use room temperature water. Fill your receptacle, your tray, about halfway or so, put it in there, and we're gonna let that heat up while we go play with our ingredients. So far, so easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we just put the water in the oven, and you mentioned that it's a convection oven. I don't have one of those. What difference does it make? Well, it circulates the air, and it tends to heat faster and more evenly, I've found, at least in my oven. So that's why, you know, if you don't have that, that's fine, okay. especially using a bain marie because the water will humidify the, the oven and protect um, your pâté from burning anyway. It's like the so. pâté is taking like a little steam bath. Yes, <laughs> that's right. What I wanted to say though, actually, is that there are many kinds of pâté. Mm. So this is just one version. Okay. Uh, and every family has its own recipe for, uh, for pate and chocolate mousse and you know all the great recipes and so this one is kind of a mix from uh, various friends i looked in my my book and i've also asked a friend in bordeaux and she said why don't you try this this what they say terrine uh -huh. terrine foie de volaille foie de volaille are the rivers of the rivers of poultry so that's what we're going to use today wonderful so we can experiment this isn't like a set in stone no. recipe for pate. That's right. And also if you, you can use what you happen to have in your pantry mm. and, and in your refrigerator. For example, you can use, you know, 
a yellow or white onion or a red onion. Mm, okay. So, uh, so we've got that. And what we'll do is we'll just um, put all our ingredients into a nice big bowl as we talk about them. Great. And um, and then we're going to put them into a processor or a blender. Okay. You can use either. Um, and so let's see, what should we start with? Um, well, let's start with the meat. Okay. Okay, so here we have ground pork. It's about a pound. Uh-huh. And we're going to put that in. Um, you could use a mix of veal mm -hmm. and, uh, and or other kinds of pork. This, I don't know what part of the pork, uh, the pig this is from, but you mm -hmm. can use belly, you can use uh, other pork uh, organs, actually. Uh, you can use the neck, which has a lot of Fat or the shoulder. So there are different, you know, that's why I say there really there are lots of different recipes and then flavors. So we're going to mix. So these are the chicken livers. For About how much of this? A pound. A pound. So okay. we've got a pound, two pounds of meat total. And you can mix sort of half liver mm -hmm. and then half other meats, whether it's veal or pork, right? Non organ meats. Uh -huh. And that mix of flavor really. Uh, is delicious and and it makes the pate less organy tasting, you know, and makes it delicious. So and we're going to we're going to have actually the processor. I've only cut this onion. It's it's about an onion. It's a little less than, a, than an entire onion, eight nine ounces. Um, so this is the processor can chop it mm. finely. Okay, I'm just going to make a nice. Bowl of it. We've got some garlic, mm. you know, about two cloves, and I have already peeled it. So uh -huh, uh -huh. you don't want to peel it. Then we've got our, our eggs from Polyface Farms. Wonderful. Okay. And I think that's one of the secrets, too, to a, a very good pate is using the best ingredients that's within yeah. your ability to obtain, right? Yeah. And the reason you put the eggs in there, yeah. too, is to help bind the, it's kind of like mm. in bread, bind the pate. All right, so what else do we have? So I like to use nutmeg, too. Some people use it, some people don't. So I would say, you know, about a pinch, mm -hmm. and a pinch is three fingers. Mm -hmm. So your thumb and three fingers. So I Can it. I smell it? Yes, it's delicious. Nutmeg you associate with kind of like sweet things, no? Yeah, I but do. It, it, does, it does kind of sweeten in a way mm -hmm. the pate. It gives it a wonderful aroma. It's very subtle, mm -hmm. but it's... It, it's just such a nice, um, when it's baked into the pate, it mm. nice, makes a nice flavor. So then we have some thyme. And it's about, you know, a tablespoon of fresh thyme. We don't have fresh, you can use dried. Okay. Uh, dried tends to be a little more uh, concentrated, so you can use a little less than okay. a tablespoon. But what, what we could also do is, you can save some sprigs. I won't right now, but you can save them to decorate the top. Oh. Yeah. And then when I hand me the parsley, then we have maybe, you know, kind of a, a handful of parsley. Put that in there. Can you use dried parsley also if you don't have it fresh? Definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. And then with about two pounds of meat, thank you. I would use, again, we do the pinch, which is the three fingers. I would do three pinches of salt, and this is fine sea salt. Um, you can use coarse sea salt, but I would definitely stay with... Uh, as Sally has talked about with the, the kind of the ancient sea salts or Celtic sea salts mm -hmm. um, because they have all the minerals. You don't want to go with uh, the industrialized salts mm -hmm. because it's just it's a chemical. Meanwhile, sea salts are really uh, full of all the minerals of the sea. That's and, right. And that helps us you know, uh, process mm -hmm. and Absolutely. use them. So, Okay, so so that's what's going to go into our processor, and believe it or not, it does fit. Uh, it doesn't look like it will. It doesn't look like it will. No. But maybe what we'll do is we can do half and half. Um, but you only need to process it, you know, for uh, thirty to sixty seconds. It doesn't have to be super fine. Uh -huh. It can be a little bit um, chunky. Yeah. Too. Oh, good, good. So, uh, but often a processor will will mix things such that it's quite. Fine, but and the bacon so comes later. The bacon we will we will line. We'll do two versions of the pate okay. because we we have enough to fill 
one of these and then one of these guys. Okay. So what we can do, and since you ask, let's do it now. Oh, good. Would you like to do it? I would. You can, you can line the, maybe um, like that. I cut them in half, the, the strips. Almost like making a little bed. Yes. And again, this adds flavor, right? For it the... adds flavor, and it also keeps the terrine, the pate, from sticking to oh. the dish. And what we'll do is, so some recipes say, okay, well, butter your, just like you would butter a pan mm -hmm. uh, for baking. So you would butter um, your dish. So, so what I thought we would do is put bacon in one and duck fat, since oh. we're, we're in the poultry world, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to show off my little... Yeah. I don't even know if I did it right. <laughs> Looks good. Thanks. Yeah, it's fine. Thanks, Tony. And sometimes, you know, if you have a long strip and you don't cut it, you can can have it sort of hang over the sides, and then you put in your pate, and then you can lay the, Ooh. the bacon on top. So Bacon makes everything so amazing. <laughs> it protects because of the fat. Right. And so here I'm just putting in a little bit of uh, duck fat, okay? And you can use your fingers, or you can use a towel. Mm -hmm. uh, or in baking, if you were, you know, if you use butter, the trick is to use the paper from the butter to, ah, um, you know, to kind of around. spread it around and get. So we're gonna, we're gonna put, just spread the sides again so that it doesn't stick. About a spoonful. You know. um, so again, that you can use lard. I mean, we're using pork, right? Right. So you could use lard. You could use ghee. Butter, mm -hmm. whatever you have on hand, whatever you and and whatever flavors you like to mix together. Mm. So those will be ready to Perfect. go when we have. Them. All of this is going to go in here, or half? Yeah, you know what? We'll do half and half. Okay. Because I, it does look like it might be a bit taxing to our. Normally, what you can do is just fill your processor directly, mm. but we were kind of demonstrating all the nice ingredients. So you don't have to do this extra step of putting it in the pretty bowl. You don't have to get as many dishes dirty, basically. <laughs> That's right. I've seen oh. recipes. They're like, one bowl recipe, because right. people really don't want to do any extra work if they can help it. <laughs> one thing I also forgot, if you put some in now, is a little bit of pepper. Okay. Just a few, you know, turns of the thing. And this happens to be just black pepper, but you can put it in. Like. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna run this. It'll be a little noisy. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, it's not that loud. <laughs> Got a lovely okay. Now I'm gonna ask you a crazy question, but could you eat it raw if you wanted to? Uh, have do people do that? You know, not not a pate. Okay. Um, the French I know will eat steak tartare. Yeah. Um, which could be beef or veal. They eat raw oysters, um, but these things are prepared by either a butcher or uh, a restaurant where the chef knows the origin of the, mm. the meat. How long? There are specific protocols so that um, the bacterial content is you know, mm -hmm. sand, sand. Mm -hmm. So usually um, it's specific dishes that are eaten. Yeah. I was asking because it really smells so good, it you guys. It smells so good. I'm like, wow. And you probably could. You probably could, but I, I, we're going to make it pate. <laughs> I think it's the garlic that makes it smell so good, right? Oh, yeah. And then, like you said, the nutmeg. You know, in this ladle, or um, what do you call this, a spatula, yeah. has little chips in it from the blades of the, <laughs> it's a much loved, <laughs> much loved little. Did it go with you to France? Oh yes, absolutely, it's been with me in a few countries. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so we're putting all our lovely ingredients. Okay. I wonder why pate has, I don't want to say it's fallen into disfavor, but why don't people eat it or know more about it, do you think? Well, I think, again, it, it seems seems complicated, but really, 
we're just mixing ingredients and eating them. Yeah. You know, in a nice dish. So, yeah. I don't know. It's maybe just has fallen out of kind of tradition. Yeah. Though in in France, again, they do, they really do, um, they really do eat terrine, or you can buy them at the butcher, ah. or the charcuterie. And they, they have different kinds, and a pate de campagne, for example, mm -hmm. which is a country pate, where you'll use um, more more meats from different places on the on different parts of the pig, as I was describing oh, earlier. Right. Um, so, okay, we're gonna just process this okay. now. Pretty good. Looks great. And we don't need to make it look super fine. We can make it chunky. So that gives it a little bit of texture when you put it on your, say, for example, sour bread. Yes. <laughs> this one is a little uh, redder in color, this this batch, because it had more of the chicken livers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we've mixed it and we have lined our little baking uh, dishes with, uh, with the fat, mm -hmm. the bacon and the duck fat. So we can fill them up and put them in the oven. And you just have to wait, you know, about 45 minutes to an hour and it's cooked. And one thing that I'll say about cooking uh, the pate is that you want to have a meat thermometer, either this kind, put it into the or this kind. And this kind is just one that you can have in the oven and it stays in the oven. Ah. Um, you can read it. You know, this is sort of a heat resistant cord. And what is the temperature you're shooting for? Yeah, well, you're shooting for 175 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a magic number in, uh, in France, about 80 degrees Celsius. Actually, recently I did this pate and I did for about an, an hour, we cooked it, and it was, to my surprise, way beyond 175 degrees Fahrenheit. But that's okay, you know, we, you just, you can check it at about the 45 minute mark, mm -hmm. and if you've reached that, uh, it'll look, it'll seem maybe uncooked at the top, but it's actually cooked. Oh, okay, that's why I need the thermometer, you can't yeah. just eyeball it. No, because it looks different on the outside mm -hmm. than on the inside. So. All right, so we're ready. Yes, would you like to fill it? To, uh, to I you? would. I want to fill my little bacony one. Okay, you do that. There you go. I put extra bacon on the sides. And oh, I'm gonna there you go. Cover it That's with bacon. Right. <laughs> this bacon comes from Nyman Ranch. Oh yeah, I know and that. They, yes, and uh, so they, you know, raise humane. Okay, is that the right Good question? Amount? Three quarters. Do you even fill three quarters to the top? Okay. Because it will bubble a little bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can put a little more in there okay. for sure. Is that about right? Yeah, a little more. One more of those. Uh -oh. Okay. Can and I put this big on top. You know, if you'd like to, yes, and you can even kind of. Yeah, oh, I feel like we're isn't tucking it into bed. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, little pate. Yes, isn't that nice? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Right? Bonsoir, mon bon ami. <laughs> <laughs> we're having way too much fun here. <laughs> okay, she t'aime bien, she t'aime bien, mon <laughs> Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay, there we go. Great. Okay, good. Okay, oh, guys. guys. <laughs> yeah, well, bacon is good. Okay, and, and you know, I'm going to tell you a little story while you're dishing this okay. up. Yes. Sally Fallon Morell, the head of the Western Price Foundation, told me that she first fell in love, really, with nutrient-dense foods by eating pâté in yeah. France. Yes. It was when she was there that she ate it, and she was like, I can't get enough of this. And she realized she was deficient in something, and that's why she was so eager for all of the amazing nutrients in it. And that was kind of the beginning of her whole career in this field of nutrition and well-being. Yeah, you know, my gateway organ meat was liverwurst, which is a mixture of pork and veal uh, liver and some cream in there. 
And actually, speaking of cream, there are some recipes where you can add up to seven tablespoons of cream ah. for about this amount of meat, if you like it, creamy. I and see. So if you're avoiding dairy, then leave that out, mm -hmm. but it just makes for a, a creamier and somewhat wider consistency of the pate. I see. It, when it's raw. When yeah, because I've seen some tell. of it that's more creamy than others. So yeah, that's that the difference, be, probably the cream. Yeah, it could, okay. yeah, it could be. So let's go put these in the oven. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. You first. So, I'm nervous. It's hot now. It's not like well, it was earlier. That's right. So I'm going to put on my gloves. Okay. So the water is pretty warm, near boiling, and I don't know if it's, it's a little tricky to pull it out. No, you don't have but, to pull it out. No, just a little bit. So maybe what we, you should also put on a, a glove. Mm. And actually, because this is a hot oven. Maybe you just do both of them. <laughs> Okay, and what's great about what you need a receptacle or a, a terrine with a little handle because that makes it easier. Ah, okay. To put in, yeah. Okay. You can just do that. Okay. There we go. Into the little bath. And does it stay at the same temperature now? It does, okay. yes. And then in 45 minutes to an hour, you check the temperature and make sure it's reached 175 Fahrenheit. Okay. And if it hasn't, you let it cook more. If it has, you take it out and let it let it rest. So if it has reached it, that's as much as it needs to be on there? That's correct. Okay, yeah. okay. And you want to put the thermometer into the middle. So we'll do that in a minute, right? Okay. Well, around 45. Right. But in the meantime, I'm kind of hungry now. Well, Hilda, it just so happens that I made a pate a few days ago because I knew you would want to eat some. Yes! <laughs> and let's have it the French way, okay? Okay. And though the French way is to eat it cold okay. uh, with warm grilled bread. So I believe you brought some? Yes, sourdough bread okay. from the farmer's market. So well, let's, let's do that. Okay. Okay. Because a lot of the, the vapor, the, the water has turned to steam, so you don't want to put your hand right away. You let it open. Okay. And make sure you've got your gloves. And we're going to just use our carefully our thermometers. You want to put one in yours? Yeah. And we're shooting for um, 170. So I'm at 170 here already. So this one's ready. What are we Should I touch it? I'm scared. Yeah. Oh no, that's okay. That's at 160. Yes, it's not quite there. No, that one could go a little longer. So what we'll do, actually, let's try with this one and see how accurate are these two. Yeah, okay. let's see. Mm -hmm. Now, you you know, what's interesting is one way you can tell is when you put in this needle, yeah. I saw the juices were still colorful. Uh -huh. And it's when they run clear that it's ready. Oh. So yes, this one definitely needs a few more minutes. Okay. And we're just going to take out... It's a little tricky with all that water in there mm -hmm. to not burn. But there we go. Okay. So in essence, this one will keep cooking in its own juices outside of the oven now. Or not. This will probably, yeah, until it, it turns, uh, until it cools off. So, yes, that is that is true. So you definitely don't have to worry. It's fully cooked, and um, you could even eat it now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cold fork now. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So we're having the cold terrine on the warm bread because this is how the French do. That's exactly right. They do. Though you can also have it warmed, which is delicious. So when it's right out of the oven. But it'll last in the fridge for up to two weeks. Really? Yeah. And we don't need a fancy cutting thing like you have, right? No, oh, this is just a spatula, which is <laughs> actually too wide for the the thing. No, you can eat it out of the terrine with a spoon if you like. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, I'm excited. Bon appetit. Mm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. That's very good. It does have a a mix of flavors, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah. And nutrient dense for the win. For the win. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Butter eaters. I actually like both. I do want some butter, Julia. If you don't mind passing it. So Tanya, this is amazing, and I have to be honest. It's it was easier than I thought. Yeah, it was easier than I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was easier than I thought because I hardly lifted a finger. No, but the truth is, like you said, you just put ingredients together and, you know, blend them up and put it in the bain-marie and it's all good. That's right. It's really, really very simple and so nutrient dense. So talk yeah. to us about, again, what are some of the benefits of including more organ meats in our diet? Well, they have all of the vitamins and minerals that we really need the most. Um, B vitamins, B12, mm -hmm. um, and in quantities that are bioavailable as mm -hmm. well. You know, quantities that we need and that we can also glean from the meat. Um, but you know, there's A, the vitamin Bs, uh, D, E, K2, and um, lots of other minerals. So I think. You know, organ meats are really, especially liver, are yeah. really, um, a really easy way to get all the nutrients you need. And you don't even need to eat that much of it, or that often, you know, maybe once a week, twice a week. And it's so funny because in our modern world, everything is flipped. And what I mean by that is, we eat the muscle meat and toss the organ meats, but our ancestors ate the organ meats and sometimes would throw the muscle meat to the dogs because they knew where the nutrient density was. Mm, right. So we've got to get reacquainted with this stuff and I think pate is a good place to start. Yeah, I agree. A delicious way to start. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. Comment below and let me know what you thought of this post. Subscribe so you don't miss a thing and click on the notification bell so you can be alerted every time I upload a new video. Thanks again and talk to you soon.